Greetings viewers, I am Eric the Car Guy, but you probably already knew that because, you know, I'm wearing the shirt. But anyway, if it's your birthday, happy birthday. Thanks for tuning in today. Today I want to talk about my first towing experience with dad's truck since I rebuilt it. As you can see, I have a car hauler and a 2000 Honda Civic sitting on the back of it that I went to Indianapolis uh, pull apart and picked it up last weekend. And this is, as I said, the first time I've actually towed something with the truck. And I learned quite a few things that I wanted to share with you in today's video. First of which, a lot of you are right. A lot of you said that truck is, is not big enough to haul a car trailer and I'd say yes and no. Uh, power wise I'm fine but the rear suspension is pretty much where I'm having issue. In fact, what you see behind me is not the reality. <laughs> in fact, I'll show you in just a minute what the reality actually is but it's not what you see behind me. And that's the biggest issue. The biggest issue is that the uh, trailer puts a lot of weight on the tongue of the truck. And as a result, it bottoms out the rear suspension. And driving with the suspension bottomed out like that in a truck that's already lowered, little sketch. And I'm really glad that I took this trip because the trip from Cincinnati where I am to Indianapolis is only about two hours, about 130 some miles. And uh, it's flat, it's level. So it's, it's the perfect distance in my mind. It's not too far, but it's just far enough to like really test it out and see how things are working. Um, the drive there, just driving around with the trailer, not bad, not bad at all. But as soon as I put the car on, and I realized I could have, like I'll show you in a second, the positioning of the car could be moved over the axles a little bit more and that would alleviate some of the weight up front. But this is kind of an acid test for me, you know, not just to see if I can haul a car trailer with a truck, but my dad also said he's, well, he's giving me the 1951 Chevy that you've seen in previous videos that I'm going to work on and do stuff to. He's also loaded it up with a lot of his spare parts that he's collected over the years. So a very heavy car to start with, with more heavy stuff in it, is in the future for me bringing that from New York State to Ohio where I am. So I'm trying to basically sort all this out before I get to that point where I'm doing that. And I hook, the, hook that car up to the trailer and figure out that I just can't do it. But anyway, let's, let's have a look here at uh, what I got. All right, as I said, this is not the reality. Why? <laughs> because the trailer weight is uh, on the support here. I, I lifted up. I, the, I rented the trailer for the weekend because I wasn't going to get it back in time. Um, so it's actually Monday, kind of getting late. I really need to shoot this video and get this trailer back. But anyway, I'm going to let this down and show you what the truck looks like with the weight of the trailer on it. Kind of paints a different picture, doesn't it? So this right here is the bump stop. And you can see that it's maybe an inch away. And as you go over bumps and what have you, that I was pretty much riding on the bump stops, which is not cool, bro. I'd like to point out that the stock leaf springs are complete. The only thing I did when I lowered the truck is change the mounting locations. I didn't remove any leaves or anything from the rear leaf springs. So they were stock. It also looks like a little bit of an oil leak uh, started. Now, I checked the oil and it's barely low. So whatever is leaking is leaking slowly, but I think the extra cylinder pressure from hauling a trailer uh, may be coming into play here. Here's my theory on that mystery oil leak because I haven't had any oil leak since I rebuilt this engine at all. And I mean, I've pushed it hard. I've done all kinds of stuff. I haven't had any problems until I was towing. As I said, the cylinder pressures are gonna be more on account of, uh, you know, it's, it's under a greater load, but you see that oil right up there? I think this uh, breather, I think what was happening was, is this oil was coming up out this breather and running down this valve cover and down the back there. That's what I think was, uh, well, I, th I think that's the, my oil leak because you can see it right there. Also, this is a little damp. So I'm considering um, I have a different set of valve covers on the Ford and I've never had a problem with crankcase pressure with those kind of valve covers. I might switch to those. Here's the dual breather setup that I have on the Ford and I'm not running a catch can or anything on this and I got a turbo. <laughs> I am absolutely blown away by the fact that I haven't had to worry about excessive crankcase pressure, but there it is. So if I can find a valve cover of that particular style with the double breathers, I think I might go that route. There was another interesting find. Uh, in this, I was sort of smelling fuel and I'm like, why do I smell fuel? And I've kind of always 
thought I smelled it. And one of the reasons is the charcoal canister is up here and I've just routed the vent out here behind this marker light. So I'm not surprised if I smell fuel from time to time because, well, it's venting to atmosphere, like I said, behind this light. But what I found was, if you look on this valve cover, it's a little, this clean area because I moved this, this harness up a little bit. But I believe, and I looked, one of these fuel injectors is actually spraying out and misting out a little bit over here. So I'm gonna have to give Eldebrock a call and see if I can get that taken care of. Uh, I certainly don't want fuel spring on my hot engine. Now I called up Eldebrock about this problem and they have already sent me out a new fuel injector to replace the one I suspect is leaking. This new one has new O-rings and everything so I should be good to go when I get a chance to replace it. So thank you Eldebrock. Here's a question that I'm sure somebody has. What fuel mileage did you get with all this? Well I took a mileage reading when I filled the truck up before I picked up the trailer and the trailer company is about let's say three miles down the road but total mileage traveled I think it was around 231 miles. I ended up using about 23 gallons and it came out to an average of 12 miles of the gallon, towing 12 miles of the gallon. Now, I'm gonna attribute this to a couple of things. As I said, it was a long straight stretch of road, not a whole lot of hills, so I didn't have to work the engine all that hard. But multi-port fuel injection, the four-speed overdrive transmission with the lock-up torque converter really worked out. So I was very pleased with the fuel economy. In fact, I didn't have to fill up at all until now. Engine temperature on the highway was, to me, a bit low. It actually sat around 175-ish. I've got 180 degree thermostat in there and I, I'm gonna have to bump that up because that's too cool. I'd like to see it at about 180 at least cruising down the highway. Uh, having it too cool, well, it's not as efficient. The warmer it is, the more efficient it is, but you get more power out of a cooler engine. So it's kind of a give and take kind of thing. But I, I think 170, 175 is a bit too cool. Trans temp stayed pretty much where you see it. It was about 150 the whole way, except when I got back and I was in traffic. Then it started to heat up around 200 degrees. So that tells me maybe a cooling fan for the trans cooler for when I'm sitting in traffic, maybe not. But going down the highway, 150 degrees, no problem. My oil pressure was rock solid at like 45, 50 PSI the whole time. The trailer brake controller and the trailer brakes worked excellent, but I actually think the trailer was a little weird because it caused the truck to pull right when I braked, uh, but it was only with the trailer hooked up. So I'm not exactly sure what the deal was with that. But anyway, everything with my trailer brakes worked exactly as intended. And I was very happy with the results with that. Without those trailer brakes, ugh, I would have been very hairy. I want to say that I am super happy that I rented the trailer before buying one. I learned so much about having the trailer, about using the trailer, about putting cars on the trailer, about my truck and its capabilities. If you're considering getting set up to, for a car hauler or something like that and you're a newbie to it, kind of like I am, I strongly suggest looking around and seeing if you can rent a trailer before you actually commit and purchase one. I think you may learn a lot about what you like, what you don't like, and what you actually need as far as a car hauler, or even if you need one. If you could rent it and you only, use, you only have to use it once in a while, why bother messing with the maintenance and the registration and insurance and everything else? Could be a good option for you. It really worked out for me. Now here's something that really saved my butt. I am super glad that I put that rear stabilizer bar on this truck. It really just helped it out tremendously. A perfect example of this is there's a long uh, on-ramp that's elevated. So it's a few hundred feet in the air and you're coming around a long arc and as you're coming down the sill, so the trailer's kind of pushing me and I'm having to make sort of a tight turn the truck stayed flat that whole time. And I know that's that rear stabilizer bar. So I wasn't getting, it helped out the rear suspension a great deal. So I can't say enough good things about installing the rear stabilizer bar in this truck. I learned a ton of stuff from this trip and this was my intention. Like I said, it was the perfect distance. It was nice and flat. I learned a lot of stuff, but as I said, with the front end up in the air of the truck like this, it makes it light in the front end, which the handling's not so great. Not to mention when you go over bumps in this situation, I mean, the, the truck is very jiggly because the trailer is, is pushing it down and moving it around every time it goes over a bump. I did a bit more research on the topic. On the driver's side door, there is this sticker on the truck and it has the weight ratings. And the one I'm concerned about right here is the GVWR. So that's the gross vehicle weight rating. And the first number is pounds, the second number is kilograms. So 5,600 pounds 
or uh, 2,540 kilograms. They have weightings for the front axle and the rear axle, but what's most important about the sticker is it's missing a GVCWR. So that's gross vehicle combined weight rating. So this truck was never made to tow anything. It would have a GVCWR if it was. Now I've made my modifications. I've made the engine stronger and everything, but there's more to it than that. There's also the chassis. And if the chassis can't handle all that weight of the trailer, then you really can't tow things safely. Let's just throw this out in my example. All right, let's just say for round numbers, the trailer weighs 2,000 pounds and the Civic weighs 2,400 pounds. So we've got 4,400 pounds of weight that's now accounted for and the truck is only rated at its own weight for 5,600 pounds. See where I'm going here? Sadly, I believe it's simply not enough truck to haul a car trailer. This is a sport truck. It's a great sport truck. My dad gave it to me. I don't have any intentions of giving it up anytime soon, if ever. But I have to face the reality that it simply isn't enough truck to haul a car trailer, especially on a regular basis, especially with something as heavy as that 51 Chevy. So I'm gonna have to find another solution for that. I know I mentioned air shocks earlier. The more I think about it, the more I consider it, the more I look at the truck's weight rating and the fact that it doesn't even have a combined weight rating, meaning it was never really set up to tow any significant anything. Um, I think I just have to accept that and like I said, find another solution for that. And I really wanted to put this in this video so that I didn't give you the impression that you could go out and haul whatever you wanted with whatever your truck you have. You really have to consider the weight rating of the truck what it's capable of because it's more than just a strong engine it's also the chassis it's also the suspension and the wheelbase and all kinds of things that come into play when you calculate how much of a load that a truck can carry and if you exceed those loads you're simply unsafe and that's not just bad for you it's bad for other people on the road so take that into consideration and be reasonable Anyway, I'll put links in the description for more information if you're looking for more information on towing stuff. If you have uh, automotive questions, I ask that you head to air at thecarguy.com. I'll link that in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it. I learned quite a bit. I hope you did too. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'll see you next time.